This is Echo 3, and let's continue our career mode discussion. Here, we will demonstrate the use of subassemblies, land and return from Minmus, and utilize some of the breaking ground deployable science equipment. After upgrading the research and development building, we can spend our science points on higher tier nodes, and we can take surface samples. We can unlock all of the research options that cost 90 points, but I am going to skip the atmospheric flight controls and unlock a higher tier breaking ground deployable experiment. Next, we will pick a couple contracts from Mission Control, one being to go to Minmus, and an easy one to gather science from around the orbit of Kerbin also makes sense. We will start in the hangar and build a small rover. Unfortunately, the rover will turn out to be almost useless as I continue to have problems with these particular rover wheels acting like ice skates. But I wanted to show how to use the advanced option of making a sub-assembly and merging it to a second craft. This rover will have some of the science experiments and electrical power for the mission. There will not be any need to duplicate the science experiments on the main craft if they are going to be carried on the rover. So our scientists will be able to exit the craft and gather the experiments from the rover during the flight. I'm trying to just mess around here with the solar panels to make the craft look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And we'll just call this the Rovi. Now before saving a craft as a sub-assembly, it may be necessary to use the reroute button. The root of the craft will be the part that attaches to the other craft. In this case, that will be our rocket. I'm using the three Kerbal KV pod. I want a pilot, scientist, and engineer. Each role has bonuses that can be used for our mission. The engineer gives a bonus to the breaking ground deployable solar panels based off of his skill level. In our case, that is none, but I want him to level up. Because I place the rover on the side of the craft, I'll need an equal amount of mass on the other side that we can decouple the same time we drop off the rover. I'm putting a science junior and I'm going to use the breaking ground uh, container. I grabbed the wrong one here, I'll have to switch that out. I want the breaking ground one, and we can put our breaking ground experiments over. We just drag and drop and put them in there, and then we can do the same to unload them when we get to our destination. We'll add a few landing gear. It's Minmus, and it's such light gravity. We probably don't really need the landing gear. It'll just help us land a little bit more level when we deploy the rover, but it's Minmus. It's, it's pretty easy, so... <laughs> it's, it's a really fun place to go. I'm probably spending way too much time working on the landing legs than I need to, but it is a good idea to make sure they're level. If you notice, I'm going to have to offset the spark engine a little bit to help deal with the off-center thrust because the mass isn't quite perfectly in line. The reaction wheel will help keep things uh, stable, even though uh, we're not quite centered, but it'll be alright. Next, we're going to build a transfer stage. I'm going to use a Terrier engine, and this has got way more Delta V than we're going to need. But I hope to do some biome hopping on Minmus, uh, which means we'll land and do some short suborbital hops to pick up more science. And we'll end up getting a lot of science off of this mission just by hitting several biomes on the, on the planet. Below that, I'm going to build a... a fairing uh, just to keep this all contained. It's going to be an aerodynamic mess if it were left open. Then we're going to build uh, somewhat of a booster stage using uh, a poodle. This is my upper atmosphere Venus circularizing stage. It doesn't really need a lot of delta V uh, and the poodle engine is way more power than we need. And then lastly we're going to build the, the main booster stage using the skipper engine. Uh, we haven't unlocked anything more powerful, but that'll work. But it doesn't have quite enough uh, thrust to weight ratio for when we first launched, so I'm adding a couple solid rocket boosters on the side, and that should help us get off the ground and then build a couple quickly. Add a few fins, and we're looking like we're in pretty good shape here. Definitely strut everything here. I'm using auto struts and regular struts. I'm afraid with these parts, it's going to want to get bendy. So I'm going to use struts to help keep things a little bit more stable. And we got our Minmus uh, craft ready to go. Uh, make sure we got the correct Kerbals in here. 
I hate launching and getting the wrong guys. The Kerbal Space Center is almost directly underneath the orbit of Minmus. If we are able to launch into the same inclined orbit as Minmus, it will make setting up an encounter easier. Even if we don't get into the exact same orbital plane, getting an encounter will still be easier as long as we are close. This overly wide fairing isn't making the launch easy, but if we didn't have it, the delicate parts like solar panels could get destroyed on the ascent. My gravity turn is not overly aggressive. With the craft having a lower thrust to weight ratio on launch and poor aerodynamics, this is a good way to get it into orbit. I tried to be more aggressive on my gravity turn, and that didn't work out, so you are watching the launch that worked. When I make these videos, I typically will do a practice run, then I'll do my recorded playthrough. Even still, I ended up editing out my mistakes. This mission had only a couple life-ending mistakes that I needed to fix, so overall, one of my better missions. Once in orbit, we can make a maneuver and drag the prograde marker out until our new orbit touches that of Minmus. This is usually around 900 meters per second of delta V. Then, we will move the node around on our orbit until we get an encounter. Because we are in close to the same plane as Minmus, we are able to get an encounter. If we had launched due east, we would need to make a mid-course correction. We will still need to make a correction burn to get into a low equatorial orbit around Minmus, but it will be very small. I like to focus on my target as I make the final adjustments to our orbit. It is nice to see exactly where we will end up. I also will right click on the periapsis marker so I can see its exact altitude. Since this will be our first time visiting Minmus, I want to get as much science out of the mission as possible. We can drop out of time warp in high orbit and collect the science from there. Then as we approach our periapsis, we can start getting the low orbit science. EVA reports in low orbit are biome specific, so we can get out of the craft every time we are over a new biome and conduct a report. This does take a bit of time, and if we entered a polar orbit, we could theoretically fly over all of the biomes. Just getting ones around the equator will still get us lots of science though. Once we have made an orbit, we can start gathering science from the surface. We have lots of delta V left in our transfer stage, so we will be using it for landing. We just, to make, we just need to make sure we land on a pretty flat piece of ground. Minmus has several flats that make probably the easiest places in the game to land, but we are also going to try making landings in the lowlands and midlands. There are tools like Kerbal Engineer that will display the slope of your landing sites. I, however, am just making a guess by looking. Try to give yourself extra delta V for your landings. If you don't like a particular landing site, you could then maneuver to something that looks better. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, I like to look for the middle of a, a crater. It tends to be pretty flat. Minmus doesn't have craters like that, so we're just looking around. And this spot here is pretty flat, and our reaction wheel actually helps keep us stable. Now we are going to biome hop over to the next place. I am using the suicide burn timer on my Kerbal Engineer display. The display can be customized to show the information that you want. The mod is a useful tool. I started playing the game without mods, and now I find it hard actually to play without this particular one. Due to the low gravity on Minmus, no ladders are needed as long as you have EVA propellant. Our scientist is getting lots of EVA time as he collects the science from our various experiments. We will make a couple more landings. I want to take advantage of all the delta V we have left in our transfer stage. The more biomes we visit, the more science we can collect. There are enough science points on the Mun and Minmus that we could unlock the entire trek tree without ever going interplanetary. But where is the fun in that? Ah, here's one of the flats. These are some of the easiest and uh, nicest places to land anywhere in the Kerbal system. Oh, there we go, getting all the good science here. Although, with the amount of science we will get from this mission, we should be able to unlock the enough of the tech tree to go do some interesting missions on other planets. If you have a recommendation for where we should go next, you can comment on this video. And we are approaching our last landing site of the mission, and here we will drop the rover. Take it easy, here we go, drop the bottom stage, and touchdown. Here, we will plant our flag, deploy the breaking ground surface experiments and the rover. I right click on the storage container and bring up its menu. Then when my Kerbal is close enough, 
I will drag the experiments over to him and have him deploy them by pressing the little arrow next to the unit in the Kerbal's inventory. Scientists give a bonus if they deploy the experiments, and engineers give a bonus if they deploy the power units. After deploying the experiments, we can decouple the rover. I had hoped to show you how the scanning arm works on the rover, but these wheels act like they have no friction. Other rover wheels have not given me such issues. Maybe on our next mission, we can make a different rover that works and we can see the scanning arm in action. With the mission complete, it's time to head for home. Similar to a MUN mission, we will be launching east and get into a mostly equatorial orbit. There is no atmosphere and we are on a high point so we can basically tilt the ship to be horizontal with the surface. Once in orbit, we can make our maneuver for home. We want to eject from Minmus retrograde to its orbit. This takes so little delta V that a Kerbal and his EVA pack could return to Kerbin. Although they would have a hard time surviving the re-entry heating, but theoretically it could be. All right, I'm gonna try and set up a periapsis around 40 kilometers above the surface and try to get us somewhat close to the space center using the last of our delta V to mess with our inclination. Doesn't really matter much, but eh, we'll get it close. All right, we'll land in the ocean here. There aren't any new biomes for us to collect science from as far as the ocean is concerned, so we won't be getting science from that. Um, so we'll just recover the craft as soon as we land and get all that good science. Well, thanks for joining me on this continuing discussion on career mode. Done.